The U.S. is offering a $5 million bounty for a terrorist released from Guantanamo Bay eight years ago. Ibrahim al-Rubishai is back on the battlefield as a leader for al-Qaeda. So how does this affect the president's promise to close Gitmo? Chris Steyerwald, Fox News digital politics editor, joins us from Washington. Chris, on Friday, the administration puts out a press release saying closing the detention facility in Gitmo is a national imperative. Today they are offering a bounty. Is this narrative working? Well, it, it hasn't, frankly, and it hasn't worked. Remember, the first act of the president upon taking office was to order the closure. He didn't say, I hope it's closed. He said, I order the closure. Uh, and the deadline for that slipped and slipped. And it slipped because Congress, bipartisan, Democrats and Republicans alike, said no funds will be spent to import anyone in custody at that prisoner of war camp into the United States. Because remember, if the president doesn't bring them into the United States, and they even had a facility picked out, it was reported uh, in Illinois once upon a time, that if they don't import the terrorists into the United States, then they can't close Guantanamo. So that ultimately is the president's problem. We know the recidivism rate. We know the danger. This is not the first person we have seen who has ended up back on the battlefield. But ultimately, the president's conflict is with Congress, Democrat, and Republican. And you talked about that recidivism rate. We pulled up some statistics. They are really stunning. 620 people have been released from Guantanamo, either confirmed or suspected of going back to the battlefield, roughly one-third of them. How much political capital is trying to close Gitmo going to cost the administration going forward? forward, especially with a Republican Congress, when you have these kind of numbers. Well, that's why this president developed kill lists, and they have basically a kill on site policy. They do not capture, they do not detain, they do not interrogate, they kill. Uh, and that's the, the, the most significant change of the administration. On the question of his ability, the president's ability to carry out this action, unpopular as it would be, even within his own party. I would submit to you, Leland, that I think the Cuba play for the president, the opening up or the effort to restore diplomatic relations with Cuba uh, and this new openness that he says, is part and parcel of a larger plan that he has to shut down Guantanamo Bay, which is, of course, in Cuba. Expand on that a little bit. It's the first time I've heard that in terms of a theory. How all of a sudden does engaging the Cubans allow you to shut down, do you mean the entire military base or just the detention facility? I don't know that in, in the viable 18 months or so that he has left as president, I don't know that he could fully shut down the Marine base there. But when the president talks about colonialism, and he used the phrase, and he talks about that history, remember, part of Cuba is still in U.S. hands at that military base. And I would submit that if you're looking for a way, how do you close Guantanamo Bay? What do you do to close Guantanamo Bay? Well, if it's in Cuba, having normalized relations with the regime there, with the Castro regime there, would create some new options about what you do down there. I don't know what it is, but for a president who has made the closure of this camp his number one priority in many ways for his administration, I have to think that the two are interconnected. Very interesting theory. Chris Steyerwalt, our digital politics editor. Chris, thanks so much.